Dr. Scott, the term chemical imbalance, this is a concept that is pretty broad. Is it, is it real? Did it start with the hormone replacement theory? No, it's been around for a long time. Uh, where it really got started in the modern, modern era is uh, Louis Pasteur. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he discovered bacteria and okay. the germ yes, theory then led to uh, our understanding that much of disease is caused by a germ. And right. so That's true. that idea spread into the area of mental health. And so if you go even into the 20th century, you have uh, Dr. Joseph Cotton, for example. He was firmly convinced that it's a bacteria mm -hmm. that's causing mental problems, okay. insanity. Okay. And so he began removing teeth that mm -hmm. were decayed. Mm -hmm. uh, he would remove various body organs. Uh, and he was convinced by doing so, he could cure insanity. And in fact, he published all kinds of papers saying, guess what, this is really working. And he was praised. Uh, you go back to the 1920s, he was a hero to a lot of people. He had found a way to cure mental problems by removing various kinds of infected body organs and teeth and so forth. Uh, of course, today fully discredited. <laughs> but, and, but then how did that account for like the hormone imbalance with, with, with women, with menopause? Well, it's just another example of where, because of poor research design, okay. we were fooled. Uh, I look at my own mother's situation. Uh, she yes, was, you talk about that in your book. Yeah, she was on estrogen starting in the mid-80s, uh, developed breast cancer in 1994. And n no, no surprise in one way, a huge surprise in another way. Here's a woman who breastfed, mm -hmm. uh, who was a daily exerciser, a walker. Uh, she had a wonderful diet, low fat, lots of fruits and vegetables. Uh, no family history, no sisters, mm -hmm. um, aunts mother, no one had breast cancer, and okay. she develops breast cancer, and you go, you know, what's going on here? Well, of course, today we know exactly what's going on there. Uh, she was on large doses of estrogen, but at that time, people believed it was the answer. I taught it myself, I'm ashamed to say. Did you? Uh, I taught it myself, because at one time, we believed that the answer to reducing the incidence of heart disease was estrogen. It really starts in a big way with Dr. Robert Wilson, who was a gynecologist mm. in New York. All right. He published an article in 1962 in JAMA, the mm -hmm. Journal of the American Medical Association. Mm -hmm. And he said that if women would take estrogen, it would lead to better health, less aging in effect. Mm -hmm. The pharmaceutical saw that article. Three pharmaceutical companies jumped on it immediately. He published a book that became a bestseller. We oh, now wow. know Feminine Forever is the yes, title. Yes, okay, I yeah, thought I was Feminine familiar. Forever. And basically he's arguing, once you're done childbearing, you are over the hill and you're going to age quickly. You're going to have saggy skin. Your mm -hmm. hair's going to get thin. Your mm -hmm. heart's going to get weak. You need to be on estrogen. And so he promoted it in a big way. And of course, with a title like Feminine Forever, you want not to be feminine. And so the book took off. So we're talking about the germ theory of insanity. This person, Dr. Joseph Cotton was his name, That's he was right. totally honored for this. That's right. And now we're talking about Dr. Wilson, and he wrote Feminine Forever and said, estrogen, estrogen, estrogen. That's right. And we honored this. Yeah, that's right, and we did. And of course, he had the studies on his side. We have studies going back uh, for decades, in fact, long before uh, Dr. Wilson, saying that adding estrogen can lead to endometrial cancer. He discounted those studies. He said, I've given it to hundreds and hundreds of women. I've had no cases of cancer. He did not believe it. And then we start getting all the research. Um, we have lots of studies that say, hey, women on estrogen have less heart disease. Women on estrogen have fewer strokes. Uh, we know it prevents osteoporosis. And pretty soon, we're convinced that every woman needs to be on estrogen. His book became the number one bestseller mm -hmm. at one point back in 1966. We now know that the pharmaceutical industry was buying huge numbers of those books and passing them out to physicians for free. That's why it got to be number one. Uh, and of course, it then got attention through Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. And the end result was, here is a uh, concept that is very, very harmful that was accepted by the medical community everywhere. We really believe that estrogen was a good thing. Mm -hmm. Women were oh, given yeah. estrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, my mother's uh, you know, surgeon encouraged her to take estrogen. My father said, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. And so she did not go on it for more than two decades after she was encouraged to take it. But then. She got uh, to that point in life where all her friends were taking it. They were worried about osteoporosis. <laughs> My friends are on it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're on <laughs> it. And um, 
they need to realize that uh, the dangers of estrogen, your uh, increased risk for endometrial cancer, mm -hmm. ovarian cancer, breast cancer, uh, heart disease, mm -hmm. uh, strokes, including TIAs, asthma, uh, twice the chance of developing Alzheimer's as a result. All kinds of problems come from this. There's no one to question that today. I mean, th the studies today are good studies. The problem was when my mother got breast cancer, we had hundreds of studies saying that estrogen is a very, very good thing. 1998, an article in JAMA came out that said, guess what? No question. There's more cancer, more heart disease as a result of estrogen. So it wasn't a chemical imbalance? No. The, the assumption that our bodies aren't quite right, we've got to add that estrogen, is just a faulty assumption. It's true that you have less estrogen as you get older. It's true that you have le less melatonin, mm -hmm. and you have less serotonin, you have less dopamine, you have less uh, testosterone. I mean, these, these substances, these hormones and other chemicals are dropping as you age. My argument is that's apparently the way it needs to be because as you add any of those, you can increase all kinds of problems. Testosterone, a lot of men used to take that, found it also causes cancer. So. The reason we had this happen was simply we were doing observational studies. When mm -hmm. my mother got cancer, nothing but observational studies had been done. Okay. And when we got our first, what we call RCT, these are randomized, clinically controlled trials using a placebo, using a double blind design. When you do the right kind of research, mm -hmm. we found out, guess what? Estrogen not only does not reduce the incidence of heart disease, it increases it. And so I was out there lecturing saying, now folks, we know that it does increase endometrial cancer. I knew that. Mm -hmm. But I also argued that it reduces the incidence of heart disease. Heart disease is more common than the endometrial cancer. And so overall, there was a period of time there, and I taught a lot of nurses, and so I was encouraging them to be aware of that research mm -hmm. that said, hey, there's some benefits here. But those were observational studies. Okay. And as soon as we got our first randomized, placebo-controlled trials, we found the end results were the opposite of the observational studies. The opposite, literally the opposite. You say, well, how could that happen? And the answer is, the subjects in the observational studies taking estrogen are the women who were better educated. They were seeking out estrogen because they had been reading. They were women who had better health habits. They are women who had more money. Their whole lives are very, very different. And so overall, it looked like giving estrogen really makes sense when, in fact, we were killing women. Okay.